All right, we start here. A march against xenophobia is underway in Hilbra, Johannesburg. The march has been organized by Kopanang Africa, a group against xenophobia. About a thousand people uh, from different organizations are taking part in the march. The group is uh, marching through the streets of Johannesburg against xenophobia, violence, intimidation, the, and hate speech uh, being aimed at migrants. The march was initially scheduled for Human Rights Day, but the JMPD stopped it due to threats of violence violence yesterday, uh, the court overturned JMPD's decision to prohibit this gathering. All right, let's get to the ground now and uh, catch up on what's uh, going on as Gopanang Africa, the group against xenophobia, organized this march in Johannesburg to address xenophobia. SABC News reporters, Valentin and Tetra, as well as Natasha Piri on the ground for us uh, this afternoon. We're going to begin with you, Mbali. Talk to us about what's happening uh, on the ground. And it would be quite interesting to know, uh, you know, there's this group that's anti-xenophobia and then there's this group emerging, Tudula, who are some would say are xenophobic in fact targeting uh, foreign nationals have we seen any kinds of uh, clashes between the two, two groups because both have now started being quite active and also do we understand why now what is the context what's going on We will be getting a sense of why now from my guest, um, but it is quite interesting that you've got two groups really at opposite ends uh, marching today. And you would have seen a little bit earlier on today uh, during the earlier crossings that, you know, the police really tried uh, their absolute best to try and prevent any clashes. And they ensured that clashes didn't take place, going as far as preventing some to do operation to do the members from coming to the other side where the Kopanang Africa Africa marches were handing over a memorandum of demands. You'll remember from the visuals that we heard, we saw there, and some of the things that we heard coming out from there, they were chanting uh, down with Ntlantan Lux. We know him as the leader of Operation Tudula, who is also uh, kept at this um, prison um, as we speak. So it would be, it, it was very interesting, and it's unclear as to why it is they've chosen now, uh, but we will get more information about that. But you would have seen that the one group, Operation Tudula, wanted to go meet the other group and we saw them um, um, walking and marching and chanting their own slogans, um, walking in the direction where the marchers were, but we saw the police quickly intercepting that and preventing anything uh, from getting out of hand. You understand that the march has been concluded, this was the finishing spot, everyone has dispersed and I've managed to strong arm one of the civil society members. Uh, who was part a participant at uh, this uh, particular march to speak to us and to give us a sense of what it is um, and the reasons why they have chosen now. Why now is the burning question. I mean, it is important that we reclaim the streets of this country. We reclaim them for working class unity, for working class solidarity, to reject hate, to reject xenophobia. We are saying that none of the solutions, none of the rhetoric that is coming out of Operation Dublin Movement begin to provide us with the understanding of the deeper problems of poverty, of unemployment, of you know failing public services, which they are hijacking as, of course, you know, a justification for scapegoating the migrants who, like all of us, are poor and are trying to eke out a living. And we're saying that they can't be scapegoated. The people who must be held accountable are the people that are dominating the economy, destroying factories, destroying jobs, are the people in government whose policies for the past 27 years has led to an astronomical levels of unemployment that is at 12.5 million, uh, the levels of poverty that is half of the population and a collapse of each and every public service that we can talk about. Okay, now talk to us about the policies that have contributed to, well, also talk to us about the demands. You know, you also mentioned the fact that um, corruption is part of the reason that South Africa finds us here, but you also mentioned policies that are anti-poor, you know, that's what I think you're saying. Yeah. Talk to us about all of that. So, yesterday we would have known that uh, Giusa was protesting at Santon uh, against the investment conference. The ANC government believe that by inviting the foreign corporate investors to come and take over our economy, something that they've done. If you like since 1652 with an arrival of Dutch East Indian Company, 
during the British imperialism, during apartheid, 27 years they are repeating policies that have failed again and again, and the catastrophic conditions of the masses, particularly of the black working class in former settlements, in rural areas, in townships, is testament to the failures of these policies. And what are these policies? Is the idea that government has no role to play in the economy. Is the idea that government its role is to facilitate, you know, um, corporate investment that does nothing but to degrade our people into level of poor working conditions, to degrade our people into levels of poor standards of living in a colonial slavery that has not been able to take this country forward. And we are also saying that they have been implementing a neoliberal austerity measures that have brutalized the working class, a cut on spending on each and every public service, on housing, you know, on education, you know, on health, and um, even in the context of COVID. Now, these are things that are responsible for failures which the charlatans like, you know, Nsanza, you know, Lux and the Dula movement have hijacked and they're exploiting to, you know, to, to scapegoat the movement. And that's because he himself belongs to the ANC. ANC that we say is responsible for this crisis. Okay, now how does, you know, the economic conditions and all the, the, the policies that you are making mention of contribute to, say, uh, what we've seen in terms of xenophobia and the xenophobic comments on, on social media, which is something that you also uh, uh, spoke against in your, in your demands, you know, and, and, and operations such as this one, because the Operation Kudula is not the only one by the looks of things. There are others mushrooming around um, the country um, calling themselves Dudula. You would have seen the Alexandra um, um, Alexandra Dudula movement also um, violently, not necessarily always also violently, but violently attacking people um, and, and asking for people's uh, status to present their status. You know, how does that all tie in together? Well, I mean, the, 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 the sentiment is widespread. And I think what is even more criminal is the fact that all the mainstream parties in one way or the other have embraced, you know, um, xenophobic, um, you know, scapegoating. The ANC itself, but not just the ANC, Action South Africa, DA, you know, mainstream parties. And what does it reflect? It reflects the fact that the ANC has failed to deliver on the promise of better life for all. It reflects the fact that all the capitalist opposition to the ANC, none of them has a program to provide a way out of a catastrophic conditions of facing the masses of the black working class in this country. And therefore, they are finding ways out on the basis of provoking war of the poor against the sections of the poor. What we need now than ever before is a working class unity that can present alternative to these programs. We are saying the idea that you are going to invite cooperate foreign cooperate investors in the economy that they've already dominated that they've already plundered and in many ways they're devastating through factory closures, through closures of you know many workplaces, through restructuring that have led to savage cuts on the wages and conditions of the workers that we have a situation in this country. That 60% of the workforce is considered to be what is called a working poor. That is people that are in employment, however, they can't afford, you know, most basic things like house and other things and so on. We have a situation where, you know, Half of the population is poor. We have a situation where in, you know, the housing list is growing, not going down. But also, as I've said, you know, when, when government cuts spending on education, on health, all of that, you know, is leading to shortages of access to that and people are scapegoating it on the migrants who are not responsible for that. I, I hear you and I, I'm supposed to wrap but I have one last question uh, for you. There was a call for the removal of um, Home Affairs Minister and this happens just after what seems to be um, a bust where uh, there were documents being falsified in the wee hours of Friday morning. Your thoughts on that? Well, I do think that the Minister of Home Affairs must be, you know, must be removed. But for me, it's not just him. In fact, the ANC government as a whole must be removed as seen of yesterday. Because what we are seeing with the rise of the Dula and other xenophobic movement is a threat of barbarism that they are threatening to plant this country in addition to the barbaric condition to which they've condemned the great and overwhelming majority of the working class and poor people. We can't afford that. The working class need alternative. That is the reason the question 
of the mass political part of the working class on a socialist program is more urgent than ever before. Uh, there you have it. That is a representative from Kopenhagen, Africa, just giving us some of the reasons why they have chosen to take to the streets and why they have handed over the different memorandums at the two police stations that they marched to. Behind me, you'll see Operation Dukula members uh, continuing to uh, picket and uh, protest, um, obviously waiting for the release or to hear news on whether their leader will be released. Uh, but also hearing from uh, Kopenhagen, Africa, saying that economic conditions have led South Africans to fight one another because of what seems to be austerity measure cuts. Uh, these are cuts to the health uh, department, the education department, which then limits the number of the resources and access to resources, which then creates a situation or an environment where um, migrants in South Africa, or living in South Africa, are then escaped, are used as the scapegoats for failures within government and for the, the, the budgetary cuts that we've seen over the last uh, couple of years. It's back to you in studio. All right, uh, buddy, don't leave us. Uh, let's cross over to our colleague, Natasha Piri, who's, uh, I believe, around the same area. You'll, you'll explain to me just how far or close you are in proximity to uh, Mbali. But, you know, what the message that we're hearing from Mbali as she speaks to a representative of uh, Kopanang Africa is that they believe that foreign nationals are being scapegoated. Is this the sort of rhetoric that you're hearing and I hear, see there's a banner behind you now people have brought in <laughs> their other issues into the mix uh, the truck drivers also uh, bringing in the issue but I suppose it all sort of comes together because truck drivers were complaining that it's foreign nationals uh, who are getting uh, the jobs talk to us about what's happening where you are Definitely, Flo. Well, Mbali is actually down the road. I'm up the road from her. We're outside the central police station here in downtown Johannesburg. And Flo, we're actually with members of uh, Patriotic Alliance and uh, Operation Tudula. Of course, you would know, Flo, that um, this uh, march has also attracted, uh, you know, attention from various political parties. We saw there during the week um, the leadership of the EFF accompanying uh, the 59-year-old Victor Ramorefe in Dobsonville, Soweto, to go open, uh, you know, a case against Ntlantla Likes, um, the leader of uh, Operation Tutula, because they accuse him of actually ransacking um, their house. We've seen their sentiments uh, you know, that were made by President Sul Ramaphosa on Monday at, um, on, during his Human Rights uh, Day uh, speech or celebrations there uh, in Rustenburg, where he had said that members of organizations such as Operation Tutula, um, which have been targeting foreign nationals who run small businesses, uh, were actually breaking the law. We also heard their uh, sentiments from uh, Julius Malema saying that when um, Operation Tutula is actually done with foreigners, they will then target uh, South Africans. But we're actually here with uh, leaders of the Patriotic Alliance who are actually in support of uh, Untlan Tlalax, who is still, uh, you know, behind bars. Let's just talk to him. You've come here uh, showing your support for Untlan Tlalax. Yes, no, we are here fully supporting our leader, our commander. Uh, people must understand one thing, that uh, before we are politicians, we are members of the community. So that's something that they must know. So these are our commanders fighting for our communities, fighting for our people, fighting for South Africans. Therefore, we're going to be here to support them fully. So you're not at all xenophobic? No, 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 you're not xenophobic. Our language is clear. We are saying illegal foreigners, those are involved in criminal activities. So even when you do to do, I mean, there's a presence of cameras, presence of people videoizing whatever you are doing. We are in presence of the police. That's not being criminal and that's not being xenophobic. We pass a lot of foreigners here in town. We don't know whether they, 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 they got papers or not, but because of you're not in that, in, that, in that operation, we follow our national offices to tell us what is the mandate, and we follow the mandate, as it is, not on our own uh, personal capacities. Yes. So I also understand that at 3 o'clock you will be talking to Ntlanta Lux's, um lawyers. Uh, are you hoping that he'll probably be free today? We are hoping, uh, because you know the funny thing is, uh, our leader was in Kasarishi, and I'm telling you, maybe it was close now to 24 hours. They saw that now it's going to be legal. So that was going to be another case that we as organizations, we're going to now take back to, to them as well. So they didn't know what to charge him with. Until later stage, they said it was housebreaking. We don't understand housebreaking with the police in front of him. So this thing you see, which is got a lot of uh, bad element, a lot of certain political leaders that are busy, busy, busy fiddling with the system here. So it's one of those things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just also bring this conversation to Uput uh, I understand he's the 
operating officer of Operation Tutula, Alexander. Yes, I'm the chairperson, chairperson of the Dula movement, the voice of the voiceless, and also the chairperson of Operation Fiela in Alexander. At the moment, I'm also uh, the spokesperson of uh, Soweto Kalamtwana. Mm -hmm. So we are here to support uh, our brother, Ntlantla Lux, uh, as South Africans, as the Dula movement, to make sure that uh, he's been treated very well. And uh, the other thing that we are scared of as the community organization is to eat the, 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 the police food here. So we have been negotiated with the lawyers and also requested to the police so that uh, Tanta's mother must be allowed so that Tanta must get food. And also we are waiting for uh, our lawyer from Bloemfontein who take out the six members in Alexander last week to also come forward uh, in the near future in the near future so that uh, he must also present in Tantalax. Let's talk about that incident in Alexandra where some of your members had unfortunately taken out um, Bapedi and Matsong out of RDP houses. But, but they do do that them apparently. Yes, as the chairperson of the Dula movement, uh, I agree that when my members were present at that time, but now what is happening, we have to engage with the community leaders and also the executive of the Dula movement. But Abuti so was it right? Because they took people out of the RTP houses. These are not foreign nationals. Uh, I am not sure, but uh, the Dula movement, when they operate, we've got people, we call them chief operators. They go to the house and verify the house first. If they verify the house, the house belongs to a foreigner, automatically the Dula movement will come and evict that house. But to my understanding, uh, two people of the Dula movement were arrested for their house. So it, automatically when you open the case for the Dula movement, after we get arrested, we go back to the house, which means we are the owner of that house. Because you must understand that the RDP house belongs to South Africans, not foreign nationals. But what but I'm saying is that yes. the owners of those houses were... Uh, what happened in, the, in that case? We, if they have a problem, I was supposed to get a call as the chairperson from the community leader uh, uh, asking me to say, uh, come forward so that we can, uh, uh, we can solve the problem. So I never received any call from the, from the community of Alexander or the community of Extension 7 or Extension 10. So if there is no call, which means the house is positive, the house belongs to the Dula movement. So I understand you were also present also way to when Ntate uh, Victor Amorefe's house was allegedly ransacked by Ntate Lux. Please tell us what actually happened. Uh, I was not there, but Ntate Lux called me and told me and uh, told me that there is a footage, uh, and the footage in Ntate was not even present in the house was outside the yard, but just because of Ntanta, it's famous. That is why they lie charges against him. That is why uh, 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 the arrest of Ntanta Lux, uh, we are saying as the community, as the organization, that is being motivated by the political parties. But, you know, we had this conversation uh, before we got on air. How will you ensure as Operation Tutu Lahore, there are no criminal elements that actually infiltrate uh, Umseben Zwen? Uh, as uh, the Dula movement, we are making sure we are operating peacefully, although we are getting intimidated sometimes, but as we are the leaders, we are trying to control the situation, also to communicate with the people, also communicate with the police, because, because we are not uh, xenophobic and we are not violent people. Well, uh, for, for the Dula to be here or uh, Kalamtoana to be here, it's because of we see the government, they are not doing their work. We are complaining, we are saying the influx of foreign nationals is too much. Most of the people like myself, I'm coming from prison, there is no work, there is nothing we can do. Now when we are, uh, we, we've been released from prison, they say go back to the community and give back to the community. That is why we are here, we are trying to come back to the community with this community, uh, with a uh, uh, community organization that are around us, like the Dula movement, like Operation Tudula, like uh, Kalam Tuana from Deep Proof, uh, the chairperson Serge uh, is, the, is the leader of that uh, Kalam Tuana organization. Okay. Well, we wait for Serge to actually come into um, the frame. I understand there are some truck drivers as well who are also... Um, 
ADTF. Um, they also grieved and they also um, out here to actually support uh, this Operation Dudula mo Movement Flow. Uh, they've been complaining that foreign nationals are the ones who are actually getting and taking their jobs. Let's just speak to one, one representative. Please come closer, sir. Putunjain. So now Uzile la uzo support the Operation Dudula. Uh, so, but I also hear good if Untan is not released uh, from, from jail, from police custody, New Vailama Highway. I basically got a statement in general from the leadership of the ATTF. It says that the Buyela is reporting the CEO of the ATTF. So, it had from the leadership of the ATTF. It can't give you a little bit of a leadership of the ATTF. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. But are you not scared, Uguti? Uh, some people have labeled your cause as xenophobic. I look, Mama, as a cousin for big CATF. Since I intercepted to any good Umdanga Panta for Langa Cash, I found Klausia will need is of Nega Uye, the pair Pauyo went along to Leopin the Ubu. I was Busala up, Mdawanga Uyak, Fenegba Buela, Jenga Bakash, Abopulum Tet, Abakasha Maforena, Abana Bana, and Amaka Moabana's IT Abana's door, our Pulum Tet over it. I'm a South African, I was saying, hey, bon, I'm going to go to the house, 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 I'm going to go to Africans should be prioritized rather than foreign nationals. Of course, they've also come out in support of UNTA and Alag's Operation Dudula as well. And of course, we are just waiting there at 3 o'clock um, uh, time where uh, Kenu Kunene, also uh, the, one of the leaders of the Patriotic Alliance, will also uh, be coming through and talking to us as SABC News. We we'll also understand that Alag's lawyers will also be here uh, briefing uh, these members uh, just outside here. So I do implore you to stay tuned to SABC News as we bring you blow-by-blow -blow coverage of what's actually taking place here outside the central uh, you know police station here in downtown Johannesburg Thank all right you. thanks very much uh, Tasha let's bring you back in then uh, in Bali also uh, there in Johannesburg uh, uh, central it seems as I was listening to Natasha uh, speaking to those around her that there's a number of issues uh, that seem to be at play here it's uh, the crime issue uh, some alleging that foreign nationals are responsible for the crimes uh, in the majority of the crimes in South Africa there's also an issue of xenophobia which uh, they say look we're not being xenophobic and then there's the other issue which is the issue of jobs that foreign nationals are taking away uh, the job so it seems like three issues that we're going back and forth from uh, what sense do you get from you know where you are Flo, yes, indeed, we are moments away from that announcement that will be made by uh, attorneys and lawyers representing Lanzalak Slamini. We understand that they have, are in conversation with the police and talking about whether, and talking, are, are in talks about whether they can indeed get him off on a warning. Uh, it seems as though yesterday we understand that he was expected to appear before the Rodeput Magistrates Court. However, that did not happen. We heard the leaders, Operation to do leaders as well as lawyers uh, attributing this to political interference you remember an interview that we did a little bit early later uh, in the evening um, at uh, after six o'clock uh, with um, Ike Kuma, advocate Ike Kumalo who is representing Lanta Lux who spoke about uh, the fact that it seems as though um, they were misled they were misled into believing that he would appear before a magistrate a magistrate on Friday but that was not to be we understand that he was only charged much later on in the day uh, because you know when you are taken into police custody police have 48 hours before they can charge you charge you and in the event that they don't within 48 hours you have to be released in conversations we had with uh, the Harding provincial office they did say that they brought in and confirmed that they brought in a person
person of interest for questioning, but did not confirm and could not confirm the identity of that individual. We've seen them also continuing the allegations around political interference uh, late yesterday where they were saying that they'd been in conversations with um, certain magistrates to try and get um, a bail application, but this seems like one of those last attempts to try and get uh, this um, Operation to do a leader out of prison, and this is obviously ahead of a launch uh, for which will be taking place uh, tomorrow in Durban. Going back to the issues that you have raised there, you know, when Operation to do started, and in the early days of Operation to do and conversations that we had with them on live on national TV, they did speak about the fact that some of the reasons that the operation was formulated was in the interest of the community and to try and fight what they thought was so, said are social ills in the community such as drugs in the community such as joblessness in the community saying that they want to be able to have an opportunity to participate in the township economy saying that it is difficult to do so um, because they cannot compete with some of these foreign owned national shops you will remember that there was a bit of an issue which sparked violence many a few years ago and these were some of the reasons that you know they it said that they wanted they started this organization they've even gone some of the operations include going to companies where they've heard gotten word or they the investigations have led them to believe that or that companies that are allegedly employing more foreign nationals or undocumented migrants rather not foreign nationals but undocumented migrants and and exploiting them as opposed to hiring uh, locals and they've gone and picketed and protested outside of those companies and demanded to speak to management demanding a headcount demanding to to, uh, to, to obviously ascertain uh, such allegations those are some of the operations that are not known about this organization you also will remember that they went and picketed outside and even went inside the offices of the MEC for Economic uh, Development, then uh, Park Stau, and allowed, who eventually allowed them to come and contribute to the Township Economic Bill, which was then discussed and tabled before the Gauteng Provincial Legislature on Thursday. Um, they did make a presentation. We were there. We were present. We saw them making the presentation and making that call for the government to try and um, uh, um, and and and. <laughs> inject money into the township economy. Now you'll see what, what, what will happen with this bill once it comes into uh, power or comes into action is that you know, the provincial government will then be able to procure services goods and services from uh, businesses, uh, small businesses or SMMEs within uh, the township saying that it, it is unfair that these people or, 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 or or, or, or businesses within the township are excluded from um, the economy in early conversations uh, with Untan Talak's um, interviews with him done much earlier he spoke about the fact that in the morning you see a huge migration of residents migrating out of Soweto into um, play their places of work saying that that should change so that is what has been at the heart of Operation Dudula. You also understand that this is a formation of a former um, politically asso associated um, members of uh, political, uh, members of military vet veterans uh, associated to certain political parties, not only the ANC, um, who came in together to try and address some of the issues that they felt were ravaging the communities, the issue of drugs in communities where they are saying that this then robs South Africa and young people of a future if so many young people in townships are then hooked on drugs. Hence, you see some of these um, operations where they go into houses and drug dens, uh, uh, so-called drug dens, where they have heard or have, have gotten word that you know drugs are being sold at that particular home. And that is the reason why we see Untan Salak Slamini being um, behind bars today because it was during one of those Operation Dudula um, movement um, operations rather where he was 
where they entered uh, into a home. Um, it's unclear whether there was um, a, a warrant to search the premises and we later saw the EFF then accompanying uh, this resident to a police station to open uh, a case against Atlanta Lux Lamini and which has led us here. You understand that there are also um, made concerns that Agopanang Africa has also made concerns about the economic situation in the country which is also contributing to what we see as xenophobic clashes among residents. They are obviously attributing this to the ANC and saying hey, these, this is a representation of the failures of the ANC and the ANC-led government talking about the fact that there are austerity measures uh, but we will know that um, minister, former Minister of Finance, Tito Mboweni refuted allegations uh, that the, the budget speech last year was an austerity measures budget, saying there will be no austerity measures whatsoever. And, and this year you saw the finance minister also just trying to put more money into the pockets of many South Africans in terms of um, by through tax breaks and so on. And you'll see that there are also conversations around the fuel levy and relaxing those in order to assist uh, consumers. But at the heart of this is the economy. And as Kopanang Africa has um, mentioned, saying that, you know, the, the cuts, the budgetary cuts that um, to various departments, such as the health department and, uh, and education department, are what contribute to what you see and what then contributes to then things that you see as the health uh, discrimination where then um, immigrants or migrants rather undocumented or documented are then blamed for the collapse of the healthcare system. This then goes back to what we saw um, a protest uh, in the at, at Barra where where nurses and doctors raised concerns over plans to cut certain employees or contracts which were brought in during the COVID-19 pandemic and to assist with the COVID-19 pandemic saying that they cannot afford to continue, they would not be able to continue to work and warning government that should these cuts continue, um, we will see a collapse of the healthcare system, especially since Charlotte Matleke has not um, is not operational and hospitals in and around Johannesburg and Gauteng have had to then pick up the slack. Now, those are some of the issues that, you know, Dudula has tried to, they, they, uh, which is at the heart of some of the issues that Dudula has tried to raise, but also Kopanang Africa raising um, issues around decisions that have been made by government and putting the blame for what we see today and the clashes that were prevented by the police on government's doors, particularly the ANC-led government. It's back to you in studio. All right, uh, Balente and Natasha, thanks very much to both of you. Great reporting there on the ground in uh, Johannesburg uh, Central, where uh, Kopanang Africa is marching against xenophobia and also uh, interacting, uh, indeed, with uh, the Dudula movement, uh, who have been saying uh, that the issue of foreign nationals has indeed, indeed has to be dealt with. All right, well, police in KwaZulu Natal have urge citizens to refrain from circulating uh, social media messages which uh, may perpetuate violence. This after a voice note messages uh, have been circulating on social media threatening uh, violence and criminality in the province. It is alleged that members of Operation Tudula uh, that have been protesting about illegal immigrants and uh, drug dens in Gauteng over the past uh, few weeks are now targeting KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal uh, spokes police spokesperson uh, Jay Naika says that police officers and other security forces are prepared to react to any event which may contribute to the breakdown of law and uh, order. Uh, let's uh, bring in now on the line, we're joined by political analyst Professor Barry Hanyane to weigh in on the political side of these particular protests. A very good afternoon to you, Prof. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. A good afternoon, dear, and a good afternoon to your viewers as well. Uh, Prof, one can't help but to wonder if there's, you know, some sort of uh, politics at play uh, when it comes to these uh, protests, in particular if you're looking at the uh, Dudula movement. And I think the question that I've been raising throughout is the timing. Why now? I mean, what are you reading from all, all of this? Is there nothing to read into it, perhaps? Uh, but I'm just looking at the timing. What, what, do you, what do you see and what's your assessment of all of this that, that, that is going on? Well, there is a plethora of issues, really, 
that have come to send an alarm in terms of society that is faced with a number of challenges, right? Uh, take one example. We're sitting now at around 66% of youth unemployment. That alone some kind of pressure. And unfortunately, it is that pressure that says, what what will what will it take for this movement to reinvigorate itself to to have a footprint and of course in the end have an agenda of some sort although it must be accepted that in the backdrop of their current agenda uh, they were in the forefront of saying uh, they need to protect uh, public property especially last year in July when there were those riots. But seemingly there was an opportunity that, wa that was offered, in particular by the Judula movement, to say perhaps beyond the riots there could be a, a currency of sorts that will then advance a particular agenda and that agenda is nationalistic in nature but more so exploitative given the amount of spaces and, and perhaps by extension, government inefficiencies when it comes to public services and providing uh, sustenance for our people. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you use the word agenda, uh, Prof. And, yeah. you know, the Tudula movement uh, a leader right here, uh, in fact, on SABC News on this channel, was speaking about and hinted at, you know, working with uh, a certain uh, government ministers. We've never actually found out mm -hmm. which ministers he was uh, talking about. But is there a sense that, um, indeed, there is um, a hand in it from, from, from government and when you use that word agenda, you know, what is the agenda? What is the, yeah. what is the long-term plan? Where, where, is, where is all of this yeah. going, essentially? Yeah. 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 So, so in nature, my understanding is that there is a, a sense of uh, metamorphosis here. Remember, they started as a way to protect, for instance, uh, Maponya Mall and other strategic sites. Then the riots were quelled, uh, but then there was energy, there was formation, there was the need to, to, to fo formate themselves into a formidable force. And, and whether this is right or wrong, it, it's a matter that I suspect it's, it's unraveling. Mm. My fear is that we should not go back to the days of the, the, the vigilantism in Western Cape, the, 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 the uh, uh, fighting amongst uh, colored um, uh, vigilante groupings, uh, but rather uh, things must be done within the ambit of the law. So the question comes is that, uh, do they have a formidable uh, kind of an agenda? I'm coming back to that word again. Mm -hmm. That say there are structures, there are activities that are within the law and of course they 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 operate within the ambit of the law so as things stand unfortunately the the the, the boundaries are somewhat murky there are allegations of of vigilantism and then of course there's this trump uh, charges that we haven't seen exactly how the indictment looks like so so in, in, in the midst of all this, some kind of confusion reigns, unfortunately. Yeah. And then, you know, while we're talking still about the political aspect of uh, all of this, I mean, we're seeing uh, the EFF also uh, sort of uh, getting involved in this. Um, mm. you, during mm. the arrest mm. of the Tudula mm. movement uh, leader, mm. they, in fact, mm. involved themselves in the matter of one of the gentlemen who said uh, that his house um, had, in fact, been destroyed uh, by the Tudula uh, movement. And the EFF, yeah. in fact, uh, helped help this uh, particular gentleman to, to open his case. And then, of course, I saw um, you know, video clips of the Tutula movement leader talking about um, EFF uh, leaders, t in fact, in one clip, talking about uh, some of their children and you know what they do, where they go to school, things like that. And I wonder if it's become mm -hmm. even slightly mm -hmm. personal. I mean, I, I wonder what you're reading into all of this. Well, in some instances, this needs to be verified 
uh, allegations of this nature must be tested before a court of law, but more so through investigation, so that in the end, uh, some kind of a case is, is advanced here. Unfortunately, once again, it's a bit murky. What, what worries me the most is that it has now escalated to involve other political actors. For instance, the, the, the Patriotic Party, uh, we are told Mr. Kunene will be, will be appearing uh, on behalf of, of the movement itself. So again, along ideological uh, uh, positions, you are beginning to see alliances being formed all in the name of ensuring that whatever manifesto, whatever political idea that wants to be advanced, it's actually shared amongst the actors. So it's quite, it's quite interesting. But on the other quantum, you have the EFF that says uh, we, 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 we are not aligned to the, the, the other guys, your patriotic party, your, your didula, and perhaps others who are sympathizers. Uh, in fact, it's hands off our people. Uh, this country belongs to everyone who lives in it. So, so we, we are bound to see some serious uh, clashes as we move forward. Yeah, and you know, it, it seems as though when there is some sort of instability in the country, somebody benefits from it. I can't tell who or, or see who yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. but there does seem mm -hmm. to be something or someone or some faction that benefits uh, from instability in, in, in the country. And I wonder if it's on the political front, whether it's on the business front, we don't know. Uh, but how do you see it in terms of, you know, the, the, in the bigger scheme of things, mm -hmm. or why there's this almost push mm -hmm. for political instability? I mean, we saw what happened with the mm -hmm. July uh, unrest and one wonders is is, yeah. is that yeah. is is there consistency yeah. there is there uniformity there? what's happening there well look it, it's all about popularity right so we use that as a basis to understand that one they, there are transactions that took place but secondly um it's a question of appreciating the the little uh, uh, transactions that took place either in alexandra or, or in other places, either nationally or in Gauteng in particular, that speaks to uh, the idea of populism. Some people would take uh, 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 advantage of the fact that here lies a chance of being popular, here lies a chance of being seen as a formidable force to be reckoned with. Whether this will augur well for the benefit of the all, uh, this will remain uh, to be seen. But in the end, it's all about ensuring that there is law and order. What is said at the moment is that there is that space of exploiting inefficiencies, especially when it comes to the alleged corruption as needed by our subs as well as law enforcement agencies. All right. Uh, Prof, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on SABC News, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah. All right, that is uh, uh, Professor Barry Hanyane, a political analyst, uh, weighing in and all that is uh, going on in the country on the political front.